Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a quick story time for you. And at the end of the story time, I want you to let me know if you thought that I was in the wrong. If you are new to my channel, I used to work for LV for many years and I have since left. It's been many years since I worked for LV. I no longer work in retail at all. I went to law school. I worked in the legal industry, completely different profession, but I still think about this one particular incident. I just think about it and I wonder if either of us could have maybe handled it differently. On this particular day, I was still working at my first location. So I was relatively new. It had been maybe six months to a year when this happened. So during this particular interaction, I was still working at my first boutique, which was very large and had ready to wear men's shoes, women's shoes, fine jewelry. We just had everything. It was a big store. And I was standing close to the front door and two clients came in. It was a guy and a girl in their early 20s. And I was similarly very young. I was probably either 19 or 20 at this time. They approached me and they started looking at the bags on the wall behind me. And the gentleman picked out the Speedy 35 and the Speedy 40. If you're familiar with the Speedy, it comes in four sizes. The 25 is the smallest. 30, 35, and then 40 is the largest. Then you're going into the keep all uh, luggage category, the keep all 45. So he was comparing the speedy 35 and the 40 and holding it up to him, looking in the mirror, you know, looking at both sizes, asking the girl what she liked for him. And then he asked me, you know, what size should I get? Now, when customers are debating between speedy sizes, particularly if they are looking at the larger sizes, the 35 and the 40, we typically ask them, how do you plan to use this bag? Because for some customers, they can use the speedy 35 or the 40 as a luggage bag. I mean, some clients don't carry a lot of things and so they use the large speedy 40 as a luggage. I know I certainly do, I'm very short, so I, so I use the, Speedy 35, I've used that as a carry-on bag. And then on the other hand, some clients carry many things. And so they might even carry the Keep All 45 as almost like an everyday bag for them because it has a shoulder strap. This was before the Speedy Bandolier came out. So in typical fashion, I asked him, well, how do you plan to use the bag? Is this going to be an everyday bag or a luggage travel bag? Okay, that was my question. That question triggered something in him because his entire facial expression completely changed. He was very friendly initially, and when I asked him whether he planned to use it as an everyday bag or a travel bag, he immediately had a huge scowl, and he narrowed his eyes and glared at me. And I will never forget these words. He said, I'm gonna use it every day because I'm a <laughs> And I was like, oh my God, okay. Sure. And I don't really remember what I said. I don't know if I said sure, but it just was so shocked because I had never had a client purse at me. <laughs> Up until that point, I've never had a client not only purse at me, but hurl this homophobic slur at me, but referencing himself. Obviously he was being sarcastic and I, all these thoughts went through my head and I just, I was kind of in damage control mode. And so I just said, okay. And I don't know if I was trying to explain because sometimes, you know, when people are offended, if you try to explain, it just makes it worse. But I mean, I didn't know what else to do. And I just explained, okay, that's great. You know, some people use it as an everyday bag. This was about 15 years ago or more. And nowadays that topic, you know, those kind of controversial sex and gender and race, those are just, it's so sensitive and you really need to approach it very carefully. I mean, looking back, I'm just gonna assume, you know, he felt a certain way and he was offended by my question because in his mind, he probably thought I was assuming that men can't carry bags and only certain men carry certain bags and if they do they're effeminate or gay or whatever anyone can carry any bag i carry men's bags men can carry women's bags i mean often there's no more men or women's a lot of things are unisex but i guess he just was so offended by my question you know how he planned to use the bag and i don't know he just inferred homophobia or genderism for me i'm looking at it as a practicality and a logistics standpoint because for me, if I don't carry a lot of things, maybe I don't need that big of a bag. I can go with a smaller bag. Or again, like I was saying, if I carry a lot of things or if you're carrying it for work or school, you know, maybe you need a bigger bag. <laughs> so all I was trying to do was narrow down his purpose, his intent for the purchase, the bag, and you know, try to guide him. But 
I guess he just was very offended. But it basically kind of went downhill from there. He just was so mad at me and he immediately kind of scoffed and went to his friend and they just kind of walked around the store and then just left and didn't say bye. And you know, I said, thank you. But uh, I was just like, what? And so afterwards I pulled my coworkers and I was just like, did I do something wrong? We were trained to ask these kinds of semi probing questions because we're trying to ascertain how a client plans to use an item so that we can help clients pick out the right item for them in the right size. One of my other videos, I talked about a client who was returning shoes. And when we did the intake of the return, I looked at the bottom of the shoes to see if it had been worn. And it just was a glance and I didn't say anything, but she was so mad that I dared to look at the shoes in front of her and she immediately bristled and told me I was rude and, <laughs> and that I need to get more training. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I think that clients when they are insecure, they often maybe project their insecurities. Now I'm older, I've worked with many people and I've had a lot more problematic situations arise, especially in a workplace. And I realized that often insecure people become very defensive and they project their insecurities onto others and they infer hostility where there is none. And in my case, I was not being hostile. I wasn't being homophobic. I just was asking how he was planning to use the bag so I can help him pick out the right size. So yeah, retail is a tricky industry and clients, you just can never, you can read their mind. I just feel like it would go a lot more smoothly if maybe clients just take what the sales associate says at face value and don't infer grievances and anger, you know, where there is none. So these days I think about him and I wonder, you know, does he tell his friends that, oh, this one time I went into LV and the sales associate was a homophobe? <laughs> I certainly wasn't. And it's so funny because when someone is accused of, you know, racism or homophobia or whatever, or accused of any kind of prejudice against a marginalized group, the person who's being accused of that, their immediate <laughs> default response a lot of times is, I'm not racist, I have XYZ friends, you know? So in this case, I'm like, I'm not homophobic. Two of my best friends are gay, <laughs> but you know, it doesn't matter. Ultimately, people are going to find offense where there is none. So I hope you enjoyed that story time. Let me know what you think about that interaction. If I could have said something differently, I don't know. I mean, I can't go back in time, but if you worked in retail, let me know if you experienced anything like that and how you handled it. So I hope you enjoyed that quick LV story time. Thanks so much for watching and hope to catch you in my next video. Bye.